Well, I just wait for these uh, folks to come in and sit down, and then we'll start the service. Morning, James. <laughs> I get to know everybody by name. That's a good thing. That's a good thing about church, and it gets to everybody, get to know everybody by name. Wonderful thing. Well, I want to say um, a very warm welcome to you all this morning. It's uh, great to see you all again. And it's good to see more and more new faces joining us. Well, it's good to see the old faces, but it's also good to see new people turn up to church. Listen, thank you for coming this morning, and I hope you really enjoy the service. But please try and stay afterwards, Daniel and family. <laughs> Try and stay outward for a cup of tea or a coffee and a chat. Uh, we love to hear what life's like beyond St. Anne's. And as I always say, it's good to see how the other half lives, so don't rush off. Now, before I, I go any further, let me say a big hello to online. There's some folks out there. Hello, Donna Worsfold. Hello, Jackie. If you're tuning in, a warm welcome. Stay for the service. Don't, don't go out while, you know, make a cup of tea. Do it after the service. Um, so anybody else out tonight? I don't know where we're going. We could be any part of the world, but please stay tuned. We've got a great service, and equally we've got a great message. So stay with us for that. Well, it seems that, uh, that the Easter celebration has caused some to be more in church than anywhere else. I mean, we had quite a few people over the holidays. I'm not complaining about that. Surely that's a good thing, isn't it? We need to be spiritually fit. But let's listen to what one of the um, most famous rule king, kings of, of Israel said this. He said, I want to live in the house of the Lord forever, to gaze or look upon God's beauty and to meditate on his words. Now, as for, us, for Christians, we should have that same sentiment as David, which is why the Bible tells us not to give up the habit of meeting with one another. But meeting one doesn't come without its problems, as we shall see in today, Sorry, I get my teeth in there. As we shall see in today's talk with Richard, who's our minister in St. Anne's, he will take us through Paul's Gospel, 1 Corinthians 16, and our theme is keeping church healthy. All that later, but for now, let's stand. Let's present ourselves before our God. Let's stand, and I'll pray. Father, we thank you that you are indeed a great and mighty, awesome God and that you know each and every one of us here today. We ask, Lord, be with us during this service. Help us to worship you in spirit and in truth. Amen. Two songs, two songs that tell us and remind us to keep trusting God and allowing him to take charge of our lives when trouble comes. Strength will rise.
of that song there, salvation belongs to our God. Father, we thank you that your son gave his life that all may live. Because of sin in the world, hell is no longer the destiny for us. Only heaven awaits those who trust in you. We ask, Father, keep blessing us, Lord. Keep showing us mercy in your love. Amen. Please be seated. Now, there, there's a, a thousand things go on in this church each week. I don't know what's going on, but, but I think I know a man who does. Now, Richard is going to keep us up to date with what's going on. <laughs> I don't think I know what's going on most of the time, um, particularly because I've been on holiday for a week, and so I'm out of the loop. But... Uh, as you uh, came in, I hope you were given a Bible and tucked inside of it one of these white service sheets. Um, maybe you could dig that out now and turn it over to the back where there are some um, church family announcements. Um, and also in your Bible, you should have the program card for um, this summer term. Um, so please take that s summer program card away, and I'll mention a couple of things from it in a minute. Um, while you're turning to that, uh, let me just say um, welcome again. My name's Richard. I'm the rector or minister here. It is lovely to have a few people with us this morning for the first time. Um, and welcome back uh, to those who haven't been here for a while and to those who have been here every week. Uh, welcome too to those who are joining us on the live stream. Um, and we look forward to seeing you in person just whenever you can join us. Um, our service this morning is for all ages. Um, Sunday Club's taking a break. Um, for the Easter holidays, um, but uh, the crash room just through the door under the gallery to your right is open with a sound link and some toys if you need to take a little one through there at any point. And also Super Tots is running for children aged about 18 months up to about school reception age, and that will start after the next song. Um, and we'll ask you to gather that side under the gallery after the next song to go downstairs um, to Super Tots. Uh, but otherwise, uh, all other ages should be involved with the service throughout and we should be uh, through within an hour. Um, so on the sheet, 
oh, I should say toilet facilities if you need them, through that door under the gallery and downstairs in the crypt. Um, on the sheet, you will see that uh, evening services restart after the bank holiday weekend uh, this, uh, this evening. And then on Wednesday evening here in church, our monthly, and, um, monthly prayer gathering all together. So if you are a praying person and St. Anne's is your church, please come along if you possibly can. Wednesday evening here in church, 7.45 for tea and coffee, um, 8 o'clock start. We finish by about 9.30. Um, but that would be a real encouragement to see the whole church family here together, if at all possible, Wednesday evening here in church. Um, further down on the notices, uh, you will see that two weeks today uh, is London Marathon Sunday. Um, and uh, so, as usual, we will have an early, short, open-air service at 10.15 in the churchyard on the main road side. 10.15, if you turn up at 10.30, you will have missed most of the service. Um, but we could do with some people to then help keep the building open um, so that spectators can come and use the toilet facilities and have a free cup of tea or coffee um, through the course of the next few hours. And if you can help with that, please will you see Laura, who's gonna stand up right now. Excellent, thanks, Laura. Um, and Laura would love to have a team of helpers to help different slots during the day so that it's not left to just a couple of people um, to do that and show some Christian welcome. While we're on the theme of marathons, um, uh, Keeley is taking part in the Brighton Marathon this morning and I'm told uh, that she's hoping to listen to the service while she's running around the streets of Brighton. And so we thought it'd be a good idea if we gave her a big cheer. So Steve, is this microphone on? It is now. So on the count of three, can we give Keely a huge cheer and clap? One, two, three. She's finished now. She's finished. But the reason why that's particularly exciting is because she's running to raise funds for um, our big building project and especially for lift access so that her teenage son Jack um, can get into the building much more easily and much more regularly. So if you can sponsor Keeley in that effort um, towards um, the project to get much better access to this building, um, then um, please do. And the, um, it's not on here, but it was on the earlier emails over the last um, three or four weeks, or let me know if you need the link. Um, to donate to Keeley's sponsorship. Well done, Keeley. Um, on the programme card then, I want to particularly mention a couple of dates. Please take it away. Stick it on your fridge or on your notice board or whatever. Take note of particular dates. The two that I want to mention in particular are on the back of the card, and that is on um, May the 12th, church members' lunch and annual meeting, um, and also on June the 8th, Church Day Away. The Church Day Away um, is a Saturday out at Chalkwell on the CTC train line from Limehouse. Um, where we go, we will hear some excellent Bible teaching. We'll have a couple of hours free to go down to the beach um, or to uh, just stick around and chat to one another. It's a good time of fellowship as well as teaching um, and more details uh, to follow over coming weeks. But make note of that date. And then the Church members' lunch and annual meeting, the main things that you need to be aware of now is to make sure that you are on the church electoral roll, which means that you can take part in that annual meeting and even stand for election uh, to the annual meeting. So the list of people who are currently on the church electoral roll is up in the main porch, so check it on your way out. And if your name isn't there, then please fill in an electoral roll form, some of which are on the shelf at the back of the church. I'll have some with me as well. And when you've filled it in, give it to Susan, who is very kindly taking over as our electoral roll officer. If Susan looks a little bit panicked, uh, then don't worry, because uh, she's just learning the ropes. Um, but we will go through what needs to happen with those. But just make sure that everyone gets on the electoral roll um, in time before the annual meeting because the role closes um, a couple of weeks before the annual meeting. A um, couple of other uh, things. If you would be free and able to 
write up notes of the meetings of the Building Campaign Board, which meets once a month on a Wednesday late afternoon. Um, we would love to have a minute taker for those regular meetings. You don't even necessarily need to be able to come in person because we can always record the meeting and then you can write up the notes afterwards. But we would love someone to support the building campaign in that way, just once a month, writing up the notes of the meetings. Um, let me know if you'd like more information about that. And the last thing to mention, and Paul, wherever you've gone, maybe we can remind people at the end of the service, it'd be lovely to have a few strong men to put away the cross um, which we have out for Easter. Um, we can take the post-its off now and um, put it away in the south porch after the end of the service, once the crowds have, have, um, have gone down a little bit. I think that's everything I need to say. Back to you, Paul. Thank you, Richard, for enlightening us. Now we know what's going on this week, don't we? <laughs> Lots of things are getting involved. Don't forget to come onto the marathon thing. And Keely, if you're out there, Run well. I know you run well. You, you, Keely lives in my building, so I see practically every day. But uh, yeah, well done, Keely. Win, win the race. That's what we want, win the race. Right now, now it's been said that uh, music is a conquering force. Yeah, if you read your Bibles, you know that, uh, that music has defeated depression and defeated enemies of God. Now, we're going to sing this lovely, lively song, and I do encourage us all to lift our voices up high while our worship team, in wonderful voice, the worship team, aren't they? While the worship team lifts our spirits. So, uh, where's, where's the little ones? Can they all come out the front? We won't start. Look at all the little ones out the front here for the, uh, the, uh, the maracas, the clangers, the bangers. There we are. That's that one. Right, let's stand and sing then. So with uplifting voice over all the earth. Thank you for our special effects down here as well. Just before they, uh, the little tots go out, let's pray. Father, we thank you for your marvellous word and the story about Jesus, how he came to give us a hope in this world, Lord. Lord, we just ask you, be with the teachers, embellish these wonderful truths in these little minds and hearts, Lord, as they go on from strength and strength in the knowledge of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Little tots, where are you? And uh, we're going to have our very own Jenny, who's going to come and read for us. Great. Well, the uh, 
smaller ones are going. Um, you can be finding, if you want to follow it in your own Bible, it's um, page 1157. We're going to be reading 1 Corinthians chapter 16. Or you can follow it behind me. Page 1157. Now, about the collection for the Lord's people, do what I told the Galatian churches to do. On the first day of every week, each one of you should set aside a sum of money in keeping with your income, saving it up so that when I come, no collections will have to be made. Then, when I arrive, I will give letters of introduction to the men you approve and send them with your gifts to Jerusalem. If it seems advisable for me to go also, they will accompany me. After I go through Macedonia, I will come to you, for I will be going through Macedonia. Perhaps I will stay with you for a while, or even spend the winter, so that you can help me on my journey wherever, wherever I go. For I do not want to see you now and make only a passing visit. I hope to spend some time with you, if the Lord permits. But I will stay on at Ephesus until Pentecost, because a great door for effective work has opened to me, and there are many who oppose me. When Timothy comes, see to it that he has nothing to fear while he is with you, for he is carrying on the work of the Lord just as I am. No one, then, should treat him with contempt. Send him on his way in peace so that he may return to me, I am expecting him along with the brothers. Now, about our brother Apollos, I strongly urged him to go, with you, to go to you with the brothers. He was quite unwilling to go now, but he will go when he has the opportunity. Be on your guard. Stand firm in the faith. Be courageous. Be strong. Do everything in love. You know that the household of Stephanus were the first converts in Achaia, Achaia, and they have devoted themselves to the service of the Lord's people. I urge you, brothers and sisters, to submit to such people and to everyone who joins in the work and labours at it. I was glad when Stephanus, Fortunatus and Achaicus arrived, because they have supplied what was lacking from you. For they refreshed my spirit and yours also. Such men deserve recognition. The churches in the province of Asia send you greetings. Aquila and Priscilla greet you warmly in the Lord. And so does the church that meets at their house. All the brothers and sisters here send you greetings. Greet one another with a holy kiss. I, Paul, write this greeting with my own hand. If anyone does not love the Lord, let that person be cursed. Come, Lord. The grace of the Lord Jesus be with you. My love to all of you in Christ Jesus. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Penny, very much for reading. Um, There are some worksheets for the younger ones who are in the uh, church and... um, Derek, I think, is just about to bring them round, so stick up a hand if you would like one of those worksheets and some pencils and so on um, to help you follow along to the teaching um, this morning. And it would be a help if you could have 1 Corinthians chapter 16 in front of you for the next few minutes so that you can follow along the various references and so on. Sorry, I should have put this on (coughs) from the start. Bear with me. Brill. Now that Bible reading is um, one of those where your eyes might glaze over a little bit. Is anyone honest enough to say their eyes were glazing? Sarah was the first one with their hands. I'm not going to name and shame anyone else, but I I think probably a few of us um, might feel that. The last parts of New Testament letters often... Um, can feel a bit boring compared with what's gone before. Last week, we, on Easter Day, we were looking at the exciting message of the resurrection, and then we get to the last chapter, and uh, it can feel a bit 
like floor sweepings, you know, last few bits uh, to say. And our Bible editors tend to give them um, headings like closing remarks and personal requests and final greetings. And it might feel a bit like you do when you get to the end of a bottle of ketchup. Do you know that feeling? So I've got here with me a bowl of chips, okay, and uh, a bottle of ketchup, okay, and, you know, most of the time you just love to squirt your ketchup liberally over your chips, okay? But then when you get to the end of the bottle, and do you know that feeling when you're just kind of squirting it out? Do you know that feeling? just squirting it out and you think, I can't be bothered trying to get the rest out. And so you just grab the bin and you chuck it in the bin, okay? Because it's too much hassle. It's not exciting. You've got enough on your chips anyway. All right, does it feel a bit like that as we look at a passage like 1 Corinthians 16? Um, maybe you, you've got to the end of the letter and it feels like the last few bits are just like the scrapings, and you can't quite be bothered to finish with it. And so you think, I'll just chuck it in the bin. Go on to something else. Well, we're not going to do that uh, this morning. Um, we've been looking at the meaty bits of 1 Corinthians over the past 18 months, um, but actually the last part of New Testament letters is often where the whole picture comes beautifully together. Okay? The whole picture is coming beautifully together. You see, there are some real problems with the church in Corinth, and we've been seeing them over the last um, few weeks and few months as we've um, worked bit by bit through the letter. And the Apostle Paul steadily cuts away their unhealthy thinking and behaviour, just like we might cut away at a piece of craft. And um, Jay's not here today, but she's um, helped me out, as she often does when I'm needing some creativity. I've got a piece of craft here, and um, it really comes together as you cut away at it. So in 1 Corinthians, in chapters 1 to 4, the apostle has been pointing out uh, their pride and their competitiveness, and he cuts away with all that's wrong and unhealthy about it and tells them what they need to stop and do differently. And then in chapters 5 to 7, he turns to their sexual conduct and he cuts away at their ungodly behaviour and thinking. He tells them what they need to stop and how they need to live differently. And then uh, chapters 8 to 11 talk about what they eat. Uh, what's, um, uh, he exposes the worldly thinking in terms of what they eat, which he then uh, cuts away at and tells them uh, how they need to change and what they need to stop. And then chapters 12 to 14 are about the sin in their spiritual gifts. You see, that also needs to be cut away. And then finally, um, in the last few weeks, we've been seeing the centrality of the resurrection of Jesus and how their focus on this world and uh, their concern with uh, what they do here and now also needs to be cut away to become much more healthy and aligned with what Jesus says. So he's been teaching not exactly negative lessons all the way through, but he's been correcting them. Uh, but now, uh, in chapter 16, for the first time really in the letter, Paul turns from cutting away things that are wrong in their practice and in their thinking. And instead he gives a few positive instructions about what a really healthy church will look like. And this is where all the strands come together and show what all that cutting and correcting was aiming at all along. And that's Jay's piece of craft, not mine. So can we give it a round of applause? <laughs> So that gives an idea of what's going on in chapter 16, a positive view of what church should be like when it works properly, a beautiful, 
uh, a body of people in harmony with one another. The common theme to the whole chapter is the need for interdependence. Interdependence um, is, is what it's talking about. Our, our church mission action plan says this. It says, there can be no such thing as an independent church kind of cut off from all other churches. We're made to rely on one another, not just within the body of a particular church, but with other churches, um, nationally and internationally. We're made to be interdependent. The Christians in Corinth seemed to think that they were better than everyone else, or at least they wanted to be better than everyone else. They were jostling for position, even within the church, and forming factions around different leaders in Corinth. And it didn't lead to a healthy church. A healthy church is an interdependent church, a church that has healthy links with the universal church, that is, with congregations in other places all over the world. And in 1 Corinthians 16, we see that expressed in five ways in particular. They're listed on your handout. Um, the children have got it on their handout as well. These five signs of a healthy, interdependent church. And as we go through them, we're going to whiz through them quite quickly. Just be thinking about how we're doing on these five things as a church family here at St. Anne's. How are we doing on this and how can we um, grow in being a healthy, interdependent church? The first sign of a healthy, interdependent church is shared giving. In the first few verses of the chapter, Paul talks about the collection for the church in Jerusalem. Our use of money tells us what's really important to us. Our use of money tells us what's most important to us. I wonder if I could put a summary of your monthly spending up on the screen here. I wonder what it would show about what's most important to you. Where does your money go? Probably most of it goes, I guess, on our most basic needs, rent, food, transport, that sort of thing. Maybe some of it goes into a holiday fund. Um, maybe you support family members overseas. Maybe you're furiously trying to save for the future. Maybe you give large sums of money to a donkey sanctuary or something else. It could be on almost anything, couldn't it? But it reveals what's most important to us. For Paul, in a number of places in the New Testament, he's concerned about the collection for the church in Jerusalem. Jerusalem, of course, was where the church started after Jesus' death, resurrection, and ascension back to heaven. It's the core Jewish church, 